Hi, I'm James Schellinglaw, and I'm here with Monique Ponfort, who is the CEO of Aurora Expeditions. Now, if you haven't heard about Aurora, Aurora Expeditions, you will hear uh, it's based in, in Australia. She, uh, Monique is based in Sydney, and it, it launched literally not too long ago, but it obviously, obviously offers expedition cruising, which is the hot button right now. At least it will be the hot button once we emerge from this crisis. And we're going to talk to Monique about Aurora, what it is and what it does. And you're going to find out about all that and more on Insider Travel Report. Now, Monique, first of all, first of all, how are you and where are you? Hey, I'm uh, in Sydney, Australia, and the weather is very hot here. Uh, I think the opposite of what you're experiencing Absolutely. right now. Absolutely. Yeah, right now we're getting a little snow and a little, it's a little, little frigid out there. But uh, so, so tell us, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about Aurora Expeditions. When did it start and what is it, fo it, it focused on? Well, I think, James, um, the first thing, we're not just a cruise brand. We're a, we're a pioneering adventure expedition company mm -hmm. um, and we take small numbers of guests uh, to remote places um, and, and some of the most incredible places in the world and we've been doing it for three decades. So we've been around for quite some time. I think um, our purpose is pretty simple but it's really special. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we inspire people to explore the most remote corners of the world. And, and to become ambassadors for the future welfare of the planet. So that's really our kind of purpose. Mm -hmm. I think many people I see, James, um, travel to kind of discover places they've never seen before, and that's great. Um, but, but our clients, the thrill is experiencing places very few people have ever seen. Mm -hmm. That's great. So this, I think when I joined um, Aurora, one of the big standouts for me was like this comprehensive range of unique activities that they offer um, on all of their, their voyages throughout the many places that they go in the world. And, and some of those include like scuba diving, ski mm -hmm. hiking, mountaineering, ski, uh, snow camping. So you're actually camping under the stars, wow. no tent. <laughs> it's fabulous. And um, skiing, snorkeling, photography is a big one as well. So um, the company, as I mentioned, has been around for three decades and I think it was founded, um, importantly, back in 1991 by an Australian mountaineer um, and he's an explorer as well and his name's Greg Mortimer. And Greg um, is a true adventurer um, and he was actually the first Australian to summit Mount Everest without supplementary oxygen. He's an incredible wow. man. And I, don't, I assume that's not one of your itineraries though, right? Not at the moment, no. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Not on Especially with the uh, with that oxygen thing. I don't know about yeah. that. Yeah. There's but, that like true sense of, of exploration that he has, and and um, if if you ever meet him, he's an incredible man um, and truly inspirational. Um, so it travels through on everything he does. He's, he he loves Antarctica. He loves, in fact, many places that we visit. Um, and he's been a true explorer in that sense. So next year, we're, we're really excited because we've got our big 30th year anniversary and we're going to be looking to share that excitement with our expeditioners, as we call them, and, um, and all of our teams and, and our, our really important trade partners. So we've got a lot of exciting stuff on the horizon. Yeah, so, but because he loves Antarctica, some of your big trips are uh, on, on ships. And you have, I guess, one ship now with another one joining the fleet next year. Tell us a little bit about those vessels and, and what, what they are. Yeah, thanks, Jim. I think we, we launched Greg Mortimer in 2019. So there's uh, a ship named after him. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, it, it certainly is. And um, so we named it, named it after Greg. And it's the, it's the world's first passenger ship to feature the Olstein Expel design. So this design is, is right, like a revolutionary design within what they call an inverted bow. So you, I kind of had to have a good look at it to, to truly understand it because it is very different. It allows the, the ship to be stable and kind of comfortable when going through any rough ocean crossings. Um, it, it essentially, and I don't know if you've seen the design, James. I've seen a photo. I've seen a photo. Yeah, yeah. It's very special. You've got to see it to, to understand um, but it cuts through ocean swells and it makes uh, quicker transits through waves and it helps to reduce um, fuel consumption, which is also very good. No. But next year, um, we're very excited. In November next year, 
2021, we will launch our second purpose-built expedition ship. Mm-hmm. And she is called the Sylvia Earl. And who, who is that after? Need, who is yeah, that after? I want, uh, she's an amazing woman. Um, it's, it's also going to have the expo design and all of the exciting new features that we've, that we've just recently put out. But it, it is named after Dr. Sylvia Earl. What an incredible woman. Um, you, she needs no introduction, but she is an American marine biologist, oceanographer, right. explorer, and the list goes on. Um, the, the ship um, is testament to her longstanding marine co- conservation efforts, including, and, and you'd know um, a bit about this, is the, how she launched Mission Blue, um, which aims to establish marine protection areas known as hope spots, and they're all throughout the world. It's quite mm-hmm. fascinating. Now, what are what, both of these ships, what are, how many passengers do, do they carry? We carry, um, we carry approximately 130 guests, um, 100, between about 130 and 135, depends on the voyage. Um, and uh, so very small uh, numbers of passengers, and that's what we're looking at for both ships. Now, what's your background? Uh, what, what other uh, companies have you worked for in the past? Okay, without saying how many years I've been in the industry, James, <laughs> I think um, it's fair to say that travel is part of my DNA, as it is with you. Um, in, in life, I believe that uh, you have to be true to yourself. And I love traveling and I have a great desire to learn. I believe in respect of the places I visit and the people I meet, um, but I remain forever curious. And um, I think being Australian, we, we have a tendency, I grew up by the sea, Mm-hmm. Um, and like many other Australians, um, when I was young, I, I spent most of my weekends either swimming in the ocean or jumping off a wharf, probably where I shouldn't be, or uh, jumping off a boat in Sydney Harbour. Um, and I guess for me, when I'm in the sea, I, it's very natural for me and I, I feel very, very um, close to nature and very relaxed. It's very peaceful and, and exciting at the same time. So travel's never really um, left me throughout my life. It's been a strong part of my growing up. Um, I, I was really fortunate when I was young to um, get a fantastic job at Qantas. I uh, stayed there for about 17 years. So I had this terrific career uh, where they trained and progressed me through the company. I did sales, guest experience, marketing for all of our global offices and in Australia. And so I got to travel the world and, and explore and do what I love doing. And I worked with an incredibly talented team to build a strong brand for the airline around the world. So after that, um, I left and I decided to, to make a move and do something different. And uh, I headed to, back to retail tra- the retail travel industry, which is really where I started. Okay. Um, and I was working for a really big, big la- uh, the largest rentals group in Australia and um, with retailers. And during that time, um, I grew a very, very strong and deep respect, even deeper than I had before for the trade. Um, these are, uh, whether they're small or big business owners, um, they are incredible and um, they are doing it very tough right now and I think they need all the support we can give them. So, And that's throughout the world. And then for the past seven years, I have been in expedition cruising. So I kind of moved straight into cruising. I've done a lot of retailing of cruise um, across the board, but um, I've just spent the last seven years in expedition cruising where I I headed up Asia Pacific for a large expedition cruise line. And um, I had an amazing time and I fell in love with expedition cruising. And so um, hence, and now um, here I am in expedition cruising with Aurora Expeditions with this most incredible, strong and inspirational team. Um, I feel quite humbled um, to be with such an outstanding team. Their talents are so impressive and varied. What, what stands out to me is, is they have this strong desire to engage others and to bring to life extraordinary experiences for their guests, and it really comes from their heart, James. And um, I, I hear it, I see it in all of the customer feedback forms. They've got Facebook groups of people who have travelled years ago, 20 years ago, well, not Facebook, but email groups back then. And now it's, it's not uncommon to do WhatsApp groups and Facebook groups, and they keep in contact for a long, long time. No, it's, so, it's yeah. no it, sounds, yeah. it sounds great. So you, you really found your calling here, right? I love it. I love it. I, you know, it's, it's really special. Um, and I've been very fortunate to have uh, many great mentors along the way, and I still do. Um, it's, it's 
really important um, in life um, to, to, you know, learn from others and to, and to teach others as well. So I think um, from Aurora Expeditions, the, the enrichment and all of the activities they do and sporting adventures are really world-leading in my view. Um, it's, it's why when I sit back and I look at, at this um, beautiful Australian company, I think word of mouth is so strong. It's stronger than, stronger than I've ever seen um, and, and it, they certainly should be proud of themselves for, for building that. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, the uh, you have some new itineraries for both Arctic and global for 2022. Everybody's sort of moving up to 2022 now. Uh, talk a little bit about those itineraries and uh, what kind of products you'll offer uh, ne- even next year as we emerge hopefully from the pandemic. Yeah, we've got, um, well, let's face it, where you go and the itineraries that you build are in probably the top three reasons why any guest would take an expedition cruise. Um, our team, um, with all the history that they have um, and with all the feedback we get from guests, and we've got an expedition specialist team who put together these extraordinary experiences. So in, in doing that, we research it, we, we challenge them, and we try to get the best out of everything. And that's what we've done with the launch of um, uh, the Arctic 2022 um, and global, new global voyages. So we've actually expand, expanded a number of our destinations to include 12 new itineraries, actually. So it's quite spectacular. Um, and, and they're across five different regions. So, you know, I, I won't go through it more with you now. <laughs> I'd love to. But, um, you know, Russian Far East, Northwest Passage, Baja and the Sea of Cortez, Greenland, Iceland, you know, it's and even West Papua. We've got a whole range coming up. That's that's interesting because I actually did just cruise the Sea of Cortez this year for the first time. Oh, uh, and very did you like it? Uh, I loved it. It was uh, yeah. unfortunately the ship that I went on, uh, uh, which was uh, the oldest cruise ship in the world, the Astoria, was built yeah. in 1947. Uh, yeah. And it was it, it was uh, the, it was a company that unfortunately has gone bankrupt, CMV, uh, oh. since that time. But it was a it was a it was a, it was a ship that actually sank uh, the Andrea Doria, which was a famous Italian ocean liner back in 1956. So a lot of us were on board just because of the history of that ship. But I will say that that, that it was a fantastic cruise. So I'm glad you're going there because, as far as I know, nobody else is going there in that intensiveness to go to the Sea of Cortez. But it sounds like you have a lot of other, not just you know. When I think of expedition cruising, you think, oh, Arctic, Antarctic. Uh, we're hearing Northwest Passage a lot. Everybody, a lot of people yeah. are doing that. Northeast Passage, people are doing that yeah. one now. Uh, but, but you know, we don't realize you can go expedition cruising in all different parts of the world, right? All of our, um, it's interesting, all of our itineraries, James, are expedition. So whenever you book a voyage with us, all of them are. And that's why the planning that goes into them is so important. Um, and, yeah, we're really excited to be doing Baja. It's also near and dear to Sylvia Earls Heart um, yeah. and the Sea of Cortez. So there's a beautiful, rich history that we hope to bring to life um, in, in support of, of her conservation efforts well, as well. we definitely saw a lot of marine life there when we were there, yeah. some, some whales, obviously a lot of different things that were quite fascinating. So it's a wonderful place. Now, tell us a little bit about... Uh, you know, Aurora Expeditions, some in the trade, we know it, uh, yep. but a lot of Americans may not have heard about it. And why should American travelers be interested in experiencing your products? I think um, uh, Aurora Expeditions has intimate, immersive voyages. So it gives you the opportunity, because the ships are uh, some of the smallest expedition ships carrying about 130 of expeditioners, it, it allows you um, to have the intimacy of a small ship, um, but it also allows you to land more frequently and for a longer period of time. So, so the actual experience itself is, is truly enriching. We always try, as much as it's nice to come back to the ship, these brand new ships, we are always trying to get passengers off and experiencing, experiencing um, all of the adventures and um, things around them. So, so that is something that is important to us. I think, so the smaller groups um, on board and on shore um, is, is a real plus. Um, the state of our ships goes without saying. Um, there's a huge range of activities uh, that, we, that we have and 
um, we have one of the one of the biggest keys and one of the things I'm most proud of is really our expedition team because you can have everything great, you know, all the best assets in the world, um, but they truly bring it to life and they impart their knowledge and, and they are experts in their fields. They've been doing it for a long time. So their heart and soul's in it and that, it, that's really important. You see it in all the feedback we get from our guests. They're remarkable. And then we have expert guides that we take on um, to the voyages as well who may be a specialist in that region to bring it to life and to really have that um, strong, you know, the lectures that we are building that knowledge base. Mm -hmm. We have um, this spirit of adventure and I think like Americans and I think where Australians and Americans join very easily is that lovely spirit of adventure. They love to travel and cruise. So, so there's really an ease, ease of um, having Americans on board together with the, with the Aussies, um, which brings me to the relaxed atmosphere on board. <laughs> so it's, um, we are very relaxed on board. I think you're absolutely right. I think Americans and Australians cruise together very well, if I recall. Yeah, I we have a lot of fun. I was on a cruise in Fiji with a whole lot of Australians and had a wonderful time, that's for sure. Yeah, we tend to, we tend to kind of fit well together, so it's really good. <laughs> Quite like that. And um, uh, so, so we're pretty relaxed. We're informal. It's pretty egalitarian on board. I'd say it's a fun atmosphere on board um, where you actually get to know each other and you also get to know and, and enjoy the expedition team as well. Yeah. So you kind of... You get on as strangers and you come off as, you know, really a close, close oh, yeah. no, kind of family and friends, you know. I understand. So that's that. nice. Now, tell, tell us a little bit, you know, expedition cruising. I don't know. I've been around the business for a while and it just seems in the last few years, it's just kind of taken off. Everybody yeah. seems to want to try an expedition cruise. Why do you think it's become so hot in recent years? And, and what's the appeal right now of this category? Well, I think um, uh, to your point, Expedition is considered the next best big thing. And in, in your words, probably the next big hot thing. It's, it's certainly, we call it beyond the bucket list. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, these are once in a lifetime experiences that you, that I guess push you beyond your, um, you know, your comfort zone. And, and it's quite exhilarating when, when you have a moment like that. I mean, when you have that moment of exhilaration, when you see something that truly touches your soul, there's nothing really that you can compare to that. It, it's, it kind of takes you back. And um, I guess it's, a, it's, it's also because it's a chance to connect and immerse yourself with the natural world. Sure. And, and, and nature, as we know, is more powerful than anything. And um, it is really lovely. And I think it's very important for us um, to connect with nature. A lot of, the, of us that have been... Um, cooped up at the moment are really yeah. keen to get back. I can't tell you how many of our guests and travel partners are telling us, you know, especially the guests are saying, Just get us back out there. We are dying to cruise again, please. So um, it's been, it's, it's actually really lovely for us to hear that. It's very important to us um, given our love and our passion of cruising. Um, and it is, it's constant. No, so and we saw that actually when we launched Arctic 22, we actually had, um, we had a kind of a record response in people wanting to book in 2022. And, you know, we're, we're really, they're prepared to do it. And I think obviously with the vaccine coming in now, it's um, even making it, um, you know, more real for them. Now they're all booking and they're wanting to get back out there and, and they're not really doing being cooped up very well. Yeah, no, I, I would, I would agree. I mean, this is, it seems to be the kind of the perfect product in response to the pandemic. That's for sure. Uh, get yeah. people out there and going now, now you, you actually just won a, an award, the world's leading polar expedition operator at the world travel awards, uh, which I kind of missed this year. I just wasn't paying that much attention, unfortunately, because it, it wasn't <laughs> the usual, you know, places where you could hear about them. Uh, why yeah. do you think uh, you came out on top uh, when faced, obviously there must've been a lot of competition these days and also in a year when there was really virtually no expedition cruising. Uh, I assume this was all based on uh, 2019 and this kind of thing, but why, 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 why did they select you? James, we were, we were so humbled and so honored to win this prestigious award. It, it really, um, it, it, it really touched us. It touched the entire team, our expedition teams and crew. Um, and, and it was important for a couple of reasons. One is the vote was done by industry professionals and clients. 
So these people had to vote um, and get on, and they actually had a record year of voting. I do say these people were at home and, and isolated. Um, so the win for us was was really quite a moving moment for us. Um, and I believe we won it probably to your point, not not only just for 2020, but but all but for the whole season, which started in 2019. I I assume, um, and you know I think uh, it, it's testament to the the amount of work we put into to bringing these voyages to life. The competition was really fierce though, and um, I think you know the the award for us reflected how we reacted and, and serviced our clients and trade partners through that most challenging year for everyone. No, it, it has been incredible, but congratulations on that award. Uh, and now, now the problem is you got to win it again next year, but we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we hope so. <laughs> well, it'll be uh, more pressure here. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about the type of guest you target for Aurora, uh, both for cruising and the other uh, adventure experiences you offer. Who's the right guest? And, and also, are you open to families uh, being with you? We, we, we get guests from all walks of life. And, um, but they are, um, if you were to narrow, narrow it down and really look at the style of guest, um, we have explorers and, and of varying levels. So it doesn't have to be an extreme explorer. It can be somebody who is interested in exploring the world. Environmentalists, active seekers. We, we see people who are really focused on, on getting activities. Photographers. Photographers, um, it's a natural connection for photographers given the places that we go to in the world. Um, and, and nature lovers. Okay. Um, and some people are a cross-section of all of those. Um, but we also, we also get a lot of people who are just looking for a special moment in their life um, to enjoy and, and to really connect with something very special. Um, and then there are people that absolutely want to go there. Um, and I think that the people that um, we attract are really looking um, to go a little bit more beyond um, and to meet like-minded people who are passionate. Right, right. Usually it's around about 45 plus years, um, but we also get people younger than that. We still get, we do get kids and we do get families, but, you know, we, we, have, a, we have a tendency to get couples and singles. We have a good program for both. Um, generally speaking, people are well-travelled um, who, who come on um, board um, and they're looking to immerse themselves into a destination and, and or culture. Um, so from our perspective, you know, we're being Australian, we kind of, we love exploring the world and, and getting out. Um, and, and we attract other, um, other people from around the world. And we really love that diversity on board of having different sure. cultures. It's fantastic. fantastic. But it's mostly, mostly going to be English speaking, I would assume. Uh, and mostly, and, and we, we do, we have, we do actually cater for, for some other, um, nationalities if, if we need to, but we're English speaking. Okay. Or Australian speaking, as we say. That was the Australian, <laughs> Aussie. <laughs> Aussie, Aussie speaking, yes. But we yes. like we like Aussie speak, that's for sure. Now, well, um, yeah. how, has, how has Aurora gotten through this pandemic? I mean, what have you had to do to, to in the last 10 months or whatever? Look, it's certainly been a challenging year for the entire industry. Um, our number one priority continues to be the health and well-being of our passengers, our staff, and our crew. Um, we made the difficult decision um, to proactively cancel the Antarctica season this year, um, gone the season now, knowing um, that the pandemic would cause um, further disruptions to many passengers. We luckily were able to transfer the majority of those um, across to the 2021-2022 season. So it's been nice to see um, our guests stay with us. Mm -hmm. um, We've had many loyal and repeat guests that tell us they're super eager to sail again. Um, and uh, that we're now starting to see in North America um, a lot of graduates getting a lot of uh, Americans starting to connect to our brand. Um, really? It's delightful to see. We've got a great sales team there who are, who are ready to do webinars and train um, travel agents. In fact, we've just been doing a series of them and, and we've been quite taken back by, by the response that we've had um, and a lot of effort goes into those. And I think it's a time where, because I find, James, with expedition cruising, um, it's, it's a style of cruising that you do need to, because it's got so much depth to it, 
Um, and once you learn it, you can become very good at it. Um, but it, it really helps if you get that training on webinars. Um, so we've we've got a, a whole team um, sitting there with Lisa and George and Ross and Daniel. So we, we're we're really trying our hardest to to connect where we can and and show people why why we've been around for thirty odd years and are so special. No, that's great, and and I, hopefully they'll all be ready to sell you when we emerge from this. And of course, you got another challenge. We were talking about it before the we began this interview that Australia right now is closed and you, you're in your, your, your Island bubble as they will. Uh, yes, it, and it's doing well for you. I mean, you, it sounds like you've done it the right way, but that m- bubble might not reopen for until maybe ne- next summer. It's possible. I mean, are you, wh- wh- when do you think uh, you'll, you'll be able to, to go or, or do you actually have some cruises that depart from other places than uh, Australia? Look, I think um, everybody's, sitting and waiting for for Australia to open um, up to international, um, uh, internationally to other parts of the world. And I think um, the onset of the new vaccine um, is a significant step for us. As I, as I mentioned, um, you know, we've been very fortunate in Australia. We haven't had anywhere near the amount of cases as other places in the world. Um, and so we really feel for them that, by being in that bubble, as, as you said, um, the government are really um, taking a lot of precautions. We have to be guided by um, the government. We have to be respectful um, of, of what happens. Um, we have plans for next year, um, and we're very hopeful um, to continue with our plans in, in the Arctic and Antarctica. Um, but at the same time, we have to be respectful of, of, sure. of what's ahead of us. So um, we remain, I remain very optimistic um, about the future, um, I think I think there is some significant steps happening now um, with this vaccine. Uh, we just saw um, only the other day Australia is um, now having a trouble bubble with New Zealand. I don't know if you heard about that. I did hear about that. Yeah, that sounds like great. I just I, I have to find a way to get into the bubble though. I can't get into yeah. Got to get you in the bubble. <laughs> <laughs> And then we I'd love it. to do that between the two, uh, New Zealand and Australia, two of my favorite places, and I would love to get in there. But hopefully that will work and then uh, eventually advance with the vaccine and uh, you can... Yeah, we've just got to monitor the situation and, and really watch what's happening and, and really be nimble um, and agile. And that's something that we can be. We're an expedition cruise company. And, um, you know, we've, just got, we've got to work through this. Um, but uh, there is the pent-up demand. Sure. Um, there is a real desire I'm seeing from trade partners to understand expedition cruising. And um, I, I really think um, once we get a breakthrough and, and we can all pull down those, those barriers, um, it's, it's going to be something very special to see. I would absolutely agree with you. Now, is there anything else uh, that you want to get out to our 75,000 travel advisors out there that are, are hopefully listening uh, in terms of Aurora expeditions, the future? Uh, and, uh, you know, what's to come uh, for the company? I think, uh, yes, there is actually. And um, Aurora Expeditions, as I said, has been doing this for 30 years. They're extraordinary expeditions. And um, we're here to teach and train you. And um, once, you, once you learn what is so special about these beautiful remote cruises to some of the most pristine places in the world, um, and what they can bring to your clients, it's a, a very big opportunity. And now is the time to learn. Right. Now is the time to connect with us. Um, we are here to, to, to help you. We're here to um, help you help your clients. Um, so please um, feel free to connect with our teams. Um, we, have, uh, we, we are waiting. We are, we are there. We're holding many, many webinars um, and it's a very, very exciting time. It is going to be what they call the sweet spot. Um, we believe we're seeing um, a lot of uh, guests around the world who are um, looking, saying, okay, well, look, I may not take the seven cruises that I was this year, but I'd like right. to take one really important one to me um, and do it on a small ship. So um, there is, it's, it's a very exciting time, but my, I would say to um, the trade, connect, learn, and you will see it will bring a whole new world. And, and for those people that already know Expedition Cruising, please come to Aurora and, and um, look what we have to offer. 
um, because we are fun, we are exciting, and we are edgy. <laughs> that's wonderful, edgy. That's a, an edgy adventure expedition cruise company. That's wonderful. Now, yeah. just to, on that on that point, uh, how to, uh, where can we go to find out more information, and where can travel advisors go to connect with your team? Um, we've got a, a team based in in the states, um, and if you have a look at our website, um, which is set up and uh, at aurora.com and um, go through, uh, that's got our team listed on there. You can make contact with any of them. Um, they list all the webinars that they have. We have um, telephone lines 24-7. So if our team in the States um, are not there, we've got a team in Australia that are here to service, um, service any of our clients. Uh, so just connect and we will tell you, we'll guide you, we'll tell you how to, how to, to get on that next webinar and, and learn all about our products. Okay. But thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Well, appreciate you. I just want to, so, uh, so is it, is it, I'm sorry, what is it? Aurora, Aurora.com or Aurora Expeditions? I'm sorry. AuroraExpeditions.com. Okay. AuroraExpeditions.com. So go to that website, connect with uh, the team and learn all about it and get ready to sell for next year and for 22. Uh, yes. Monique, I want to thank you for taking the time. It's been great to meet you here on, you, on, on a Zoom, a Zoom interview as always. Uh, but uh, you're making me uh, work. You know, I'd really love to come out one of these days and see what you got. It, it sounds like a wonderful Absolutely. Story. It's very special. Absolutely. Very special. <laughs> I'm James Schillinglaw, and this is Insider Travel Report. <laughs>